Okay, Strat, stage is yours. <laughs> okay, so hello everyone. Um, today's talk is on distributed memory camera counter on, on GPUs. And this work is uh, done by, in collaboration with UC Berkeley and Berkeley Lab. Uh, so the outline of this talk is that at first we'll talk about what is a KMR counter and its application in bioinformatic analysis. Then we show our uh, optimization while developing the high-performing GPU solution for distributed memory. And then, the, uh, then we identify the bottlenecks in the existing solution, and uh, which is uh, the communication-based, and we use a novel technique that is using SuperMars to reduce communication volume. And then we show our experiments and results and uh, we conclude. So a KMR counter is um, basically a length K subsequences of genome sequence. So if you look at the example here, like the top left figure, they are an example of two reads. And the first read is consists of seven character and the second one is also seven character. And uh, the example shows of three Mars. So we'll take like three characters subsequently and we'll build a camera. So if you look at this table, it shows that GTC from the very first character, if you go up to three characters, then TCA, then CAT, then ATC. And we will do same for all the reads. Now, the, when we build a camera counter based on this camera, that is basically a histogram. Like if you look at the table on our right, that these are the extracted cameras from these two reads, and it shows the count, which just counts the frequency of each camera. So for example, GTC, this camera appears only one, so we have count one. TCA appears three times, so we have three. And the last two columns are the read ID and read position, that is some meta information required by many application. So while developing this module, our primary focus on to integrate it with uh, Dbella, which is a de novo genome assembly pipeline on distributed setup. So uh, for that application, we need to store the read ID and read position on that. So the read ID will be like, if you want to store TCA that comes in read one and also read two, and also the read position, like inside the read, which character it starts from. So we can also store this information. Our current framework doesn't support this extra information, but it's a straightforward solution, which belongs in our future work. And the application of this camera counter is in um, most of the, in, in a lot of bioinformatic analysis application, including taxonomic assignment, metagenome classification, genome and metagenome assembly, and, and et cetera. So, um, Let's move on to one of the examples. As we said that our, uh, we started with uh, optimizing the one of the module in the DBLA pipeline. So on our left, we have the pipeline for the DBLA assembly. So we start with a bunch of reads, which are just sequence of characters. And our end goal is to have a nice long assembled genome sequence. And in between, what we do is we parse the KMR, we try to build some contig, we find the overlaps and um, try to match them with each other as best as we can. And that's our ultimate solution. But in this work, our primary focus is that one module in the whole pipeline that is the building the histogram for KMR analysis. So if we look on our right, um, this is the like the zoom in for the camera analysis that how that module looks like in a distributed setup. So um, this example is showing uh, that, for example, we have uh, n number of processor and we uniformly distribute our reads to uh, n processor that's kind of like random. And then we each processor parse the cameras, uh, which means that it extracts the substring from a long or short read. Then it assigned the destination for each camera, which that means is that we want to uh, we want to like locally build, locally count the cameras, and to do that we want to have all the occurrences of the same camera in the same processor. So that's why we hash or find some way 
to assign a unique destination for each KMR and send all the KMRs from all the processor to that one processor so that all the KMRs are at the same destination. So here you see, after we do the find the destination, then we exchange the, uh, that is an MPI routine. We exchange all the KMRs and each KMR will count the KMRs. We'll see all these modules in detail in uh, later in our talk. So, and oh, sorry, yeah. So in this work, at first we develop a straightforward approach for a distributed KMR counter, but on GPUs. So how we do that is we copy the reads from GPU to CPU at the beginning, and then we uh, export this module to GPU. We write our CUDA code and we do the exchange KMRs part and that MPI routine can be on CPU or can be on GPU. And, um, and at the end, we count the KMRs on each GPU. So all, everything, um, on the higher level is the same, just the underlying kernel instead of uh, CPU. Now all the modules run on GPU. That is our straightforward solution. So, uh, but while developing this solution, we of course keep in mind all the strategy and the scope and the challenges for GPUs. So uh, we will talk about the most important kernel that is like the parsing and finding destination kernel, the green boxes and the building the hash table to count the cameras. So we'll look at the GPU specific optimization for this two module. So uh, for the parson pack one, um, so uh, if we look at the figure, there is an example of two reads and the first read um, on the GPU. So uh, we assign each GPU thread to one character. So each GPU, threads, all the GPU threads are accessing consecutive memory location for the read. It's extracting its KMR. So if it's a trimmer, the thread T1 will just extract GTC. It will read up to three character. It will find its destination processor. Here is an example of an outgoing buffer with the end destination processor. So if it sees that, for example, GTC here goes to destination processor two. So if that what is the output of the hash function, it will populate the output buffer to here. And that's how all the processor will in parallel update the outgoing buffer. So it requires an atomic update because there is a conflict of data risk to avoid that we'll use atomic operation. And once one of the destination processor are full, so we need to now start broadcasting because we cannot accommodate any more KMR, then we'll launch an MPI all to all operation. So to summarize, um, this work, um, we first copy all the reads, uh, all the characters to GPU, then we map GPU threads to each character, then we parse them, hash them, and send it via MPI all to all. Uh, by doing this uh, GPU technique, by assigning each thread to each character and to parse one KMR, we are assuring quality access. So where, and in GPU, if you, if there, uh, threads are accessing consecutive memory, then it can reduce 32 threads, uh, 32 memory transactions, or depending on the architecture, M number of uh, transaction into one memory transaction. So we can exploit that. And also we have a near perfect load balance because we, uh, we are launching as many thread blocks as there are characters in the, in the read. And the next step is uh, then we do the on MPI all to all, then we build the hash table. Our hash table implementation is pretty basic. We use linear probing based, open addressing based uh, hash table where um, we give GPU all the KMRs that has, uh, uh, it has received from all the processors. Then we assign all the GPU threads in parallel to populate uh, the destination, um, uh, to populate the, um, the, uh, the destination location. So here um, we'll keep, we want to uh, keep a count of the frequency and that also happens in an atomic manner. So if two KMRs are hashed to the same location, we keep the, that KMR keep looking for the next open slot and it will keep going in a linear manner. So in this example, CGT is also trying to allocate the location where the GAT is already uh, took that position. So it will keep looking and it will put itself whenever it finds a new open location. 
And if multiple threads try to populate the same location to avoid that condition, again, to avoid the risk condition, we uh, again use atomic operation to update our hash table. So, um, so now we have a uh, good, um, we have exported all the modules to our GPU. And now if we do some experiment to see how our, um, the new GPU module looks like, um, we get these results. So on the left side, we have the, our baseline, the CPU-based KMR counter that is on homo sapien data set on uh, Summit cluster CPU IBM Power 9, where you see that by using 64 nodes and each node has 42 cores. So we have 2688 CPU cores. We see that we require uh, more than 3000 seconds and the communication is the red line here is the MPI all to all communication that is around 30 seconds. And the blue bar is uh, the parsing module and the yellow part is the building hash table module. So these are the three main module and we see that communication, we can, you can barely see the communication because the computation module are dominating the whole pipeline. So now we look at our GPU version, which we just developed. Then you see that if we use the same number of nodes, but we have six GPUs per node on the same summit cluster, then we have 384 GPUs on the same data set. We see that the whole pipeline takes only 30 seconds. Here we were using up to like 3000 seconds with 30 seconds. But now the computation module are so optimized uh, that the communication now becomes a new bottleneck. The whole red, so here also it took like 30 seconds. Here also it's taking 30 seconds, but this is now um, overpowering the, the computation module. So our next, next um, contribution is optimizing the communication volume in our distributed setup. So to do that, we use, uh, we use the concept of SuperMar, which was popular in the biology uh, field for a long time. So we use the uh, concept of SuperMar to reduce the communication. And how do we do that? Let's look at this figure. So this is our uh, read. Um, this is uh, our only an example read. And at first we extract the k-mers. So if you look here, um, this is an example of eight mars. So we parse a k-mer, then we find the minimizer of that k-mer. So minimizer, you can, there are many ways to find a minimizer. In this work, we took the lexicographically smallest substring as a minimizer. So here, we let's assume in the first k-mer, our ACTG is the minimizer. Then we go to the next KMR, which is stretched from C and ends at G. And we look at the, we find the minimizer and we notice that the first one and the second one shares the same uh, minimizer. So, and we keep going on as long as we find a shared minimizer. So in, in genomic sequence, this is actually, this can actually happen pretty often. Um, there are often many reputations. So finding minimizer is actually can be a common practice. So as long as we find common minimizer in the extracted k mars we keep building the SuperMar, which means that we'll start concatenating the k mars into one long string as long as there is a common minimizer. So in this work, the first k mars starts at A and the last k mars starts at C. So from A to C, we can build the SuperMar. And now, instead of exchanging the k mars as we were doing in our previous pipeline, we can just use, exchange that SuperMar. So we can save a lot of uh, bytes by not sending these extra characters. And similarly, if we go to the next character from G, we, we can keep doing for all the reads, finding super minimizer and finding the SuperMar and, uh, uh, and map to the, Oh, yeah, so we will find continuous contiguous KMR with a common minimizer and then map to the same process ID with the minimizer based hashing. So before when we were uh, hashing the KMR to find a destination processor, now we can find SuperMar to find the destination processor. So it saves volume and also number of messages. So in terms of the whole pipeline, as we saw the top figure in, in the first couple of slides that the, the, the three main modules were parsing KMR, assigning KMRs to destination processor, and then count KMRs. So now when you do the SuperMar based one, so we have some extra work to do because after parsing the KMR, now we have to build the SuperMar. 
and hash the supermar and then send it, exchange those supermar. And at the receiving side also, we have to parse back the KMARs from supermar and then build our KMAR counter, which is basically an hash table. So uh, the building KMR parse is exactly the same as the previous one. So we don't, uh, we are not gonna show details on that, but the parsing part is now got a little more complicated. So we are gonna go look at a little bit detail on that. So this is, is what is happening, it is on GPU. So on the left side, for a reference, I put the, uh, the parsing module from the original one and the right one is the parsing module from the supermar based one. So in the supermar based one, um, uh, so uh, we maintain a window length. That's mean like uh, in the figure that if you keep finding a common minimizer, actually how far you are gonna go. So for example, if you go back to this figure that we can, as long as you ideally, you should keep concatenating your characters as long as there is a common minimizer. But in GPU, that doesn't um, guarantee us the load balance or how do we actually partition the data. So to ease our computation, we kind of uh, like group the num. We came up with a like maximum window length that find all the KMARs that in this window length and build a supermar in this uh, in this range. So here, that's our window length. We are assigning one thread to process all the KMARs in that window length. And uh, by doing this, what we are avoiding is that thread communication. So if T1 is processing all the KMARs from like GTC, TCA, and CAT, then it can parse the KMARs, it can look at the minimizer of that KMAR. And if it sees that, oh, this minimizer also matches with the KMAR for the next minimizer, sorry, minimizer for the next KMAR, then I can just concatenate these two into a supermar. So a uh, thread can independently take the decision and write it to the outgoing buffer without having to communicate with the next thread or whatsoever. So we did lose a little bit of uh, parallelism here, but uh, I think we have enough work still to actually uh, like utilize the GPU. So here, uh, the first thread finds the, the, the super Mars and it populates uh, the outgoing buffer accordingly. And this time we also have to keep an extra data structure that is the super Mars length. So to figure out that uh, in that window, how many super Mars is found by the, by the thread. So we are sending an extra data structure, but it's actually negligible uh, compared to the amount that we are saving in the outgoing buffer. Uh, yeah. So this is um, so this summarizes the, the the complicated implementation of the parsing module, and we know that so after the parsing module we just communicate and use the same hash function that we used uh, in our previous pipeline. And now let's look at the um, experimental results. So we experimented on uh, on the same architecture from our previous results that CPU is power nine IBM and for GPU we use NVIDIA V100. And um, our data sets are the common data sets that use in, in this field. And our data set varies from the pretty small one up from 249 megabyte to homo sapiens data set, which is 317 gigabyte. And, uh, and you can see that the right bottom table shows that the number of KMARs and the number of SuperMar. So for example, if you look in the Ecoli data set, you see that when you parse the KMAR and you exchange the KMAR, you will actually have 412 million KMARs to process. But if you want to just exchange SuperMars, then you're extending just 126 uh, million SuperMar. So you see the reduction in communication just from this, uh, the from this table, the, how the communication volume is reducing, and if you look on our left side, we see the if we just look at the speed up in MPI all to all view routine um, uh, specifically on the same sixty four nodes, then you see that we have up to like three uh, x more than three x speed up using SuperMar seven. So here by seven and nine, it signifies the the window length. No, sorry, it minim uh, the minimizer length, sorry, my apologies, that uh, our KMR length is 17 in all these experiments and our minimizer length is seven, nine or 11. 
So here, this figure shows the results for seven and nine. And, uh, and here it shows the two biggest data sets that is almost nine gigabyte and 317 gigabyte and how uh, this uh, new, our new super memory solution is giving us up to three X speed up. Um, and now uh, we have the overall speed up on the overall pipeline. On the left, we see the, the improvement using the, uh, the computation module only. So this pipeline is a combination of like uh, expensive computation module and also communication module. So the left figure is showing us if we just look at the computation module, then how good GPU did. Then you see that we see a nice scaling effect from four nodes to 128 nodes, where six GPUs each per node. Then you see that uh, uh, the Kmart insertion rate in, in billions using the computation kernel of GPUs, just looking at the computation kernel. And on our right, uh, we see the speed up of the whole pipeline, including the combination kernel, computation kernel, and everything. But the baseline is the CPU-based baseline, uh, which you have started out working with at the very beginning. So we see that we are achieving up to like 140x speed up using 64 GPU nodes and uh, super uh, The orange column uh, signifies the KMR-based KMR counter, which was our original proposal. The, uh, and all these columns are GPU-based, but the yellow one is the KMR-based one and the blue ones are the super based one. And you see that SuperMar based one is um, always outperforming the KMR based one. And by using the SuperMar based one, we are getting up to like 150x speed up. Um, so in this work, we propose a massively parallel algorithm for KMR counting, which is kind of string histogramming. Our GP optimization turned a compute bound problem into a communication bound one. And we used uh, the novel idea of using SuperMar, which reduces our communication volume, improves our communication time. And uh, we get 1.5x speed up of using SuperMars on top of our GP optimization, resulting overall 150x speed up. And we think that with increasing number of uh, data set, uh, uh, like with the size of the data set, our solution will be really beneficial into several like related species, microbial communities, and across a database of uh, protein of genomes. And um, yeah, that's all. So um, thank you.